But um, one Saturday morning, uh, well, late morning, around noon, some young boys came in with Jack. Uh, at that time, you wouldn't have recognized him for what he looks for like today, but he had a hole in the side of his face and he was um, comatose. And the boys gave me some uh, answers as to what happened and they basically said that he'd been shot with an arrow and that it wouldn't come out. Now, I didn't see an arrow, so I took that with a grain of salt. In any event, I treated him and I x-rayed him and sure enough, there was an arrowhead lodged in his head um, in a place that was probably the only place in an animal's body where an arrowhead can lodge and not kill the animal. So I treated him and um, replaced some teeth in his mouth and uh, uh, didn't have to do anything to the arrowhead at that point because it wasn't approachable through his mouth or his nose or anything at that point. And he survived. So uh, we kept him for several weeks. The uh, family turned him over to me um, with a permission and actually put a little bit of money down on him as part of I think a little bit of their feelings of what they'd done to him and uh, let it go at that. I spent the next three months getting Jack into a medical condition where he was able to eat and drink. Um, he wasn't socialized at all. I don't think he'd ever been in a house very much, if at all. And he was very, very distrustful of people, which is understandable. I had realized that I wasn't able to do this surgery as well as some better trained veterinary surgeons. So I was beginning to look around. I received some estimates from different universities and uh, it wasn't exactly uh, inexpensive uh, and it wasn't really expensive, but it was still more than we had. So one of my employees then had the idea of putting this on the internet and my web providers, virtual clinics, who had managed my website for 10 years uh, suggested that they put some information on the internet and that I do some videos of Jack and his progress and I did and lo and behold uh, a lot of contributions came in and we had more than enough money to have him treated. So I started a not-for-profit foundation and put the rest of the money in there to use for other animals um, and then for his expenses also and sent him to LSU with one of my associates here and her mother and uh, had them do a complete workup on him. Jack had heartworms or lichia, which is a tick-borne disease and every other parasite you can imagine and he was underweight and in very bad shape and it took about three more months to get him into a physical condition for the surgery. In the meantime, I took the uh, x-rays to uh, Gander Mountain, that's an outdoor supply company here in the area that has outdoor sporting goods and the uh, young men there were able to uh, locate and identify exactly the arrowhead or broadhead that was in his head. So I bought one of these broadheads and sent it to the surgeon at LSU to practice with and to see what it looked like before she went in to remove the real one from Jack's head. So about six months then after the injury, Jack went to uh, LSU and uh, the surgery was a complete success. He did just fine and came home. It took about another six months for him to recover from that. And the last two years have more or less been socializing. The, the end of this story isn't finished yet. Uh, Jack is doing fine. He's going to have a nice life. He's taken over the clinic and it's his job to watch everybody that comes in and to go out and meet everybody. And believe me, two years ago, if you'd told me that this doggy would eventually become friendly enough and trusting enough to walk up and sit next to a stranger to be petted, I, would have, I wouldn't, have, wouldn't have believed it because I've seen the trauma he'd been through. It's remarkable how animals can forgive repeatedly. It's probably a lesson we all could learn from.